154 million 184,000 and 941. That's the total number of reported cases of COVID-19 so far. And among these, there have sadly been a recorded 3,227,002 deaths. But the pandemic hasn't only taken lives. The situation has also seen a negative effect on the mental health of various populations. Results from the Household Pulse survey showed that at the beginning of this year, an average of 41% of those surveyed reported symptoms of anxiety or depression. The pandemic has also seen an increase in unemployment in many countries. According to an article posted on the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, soon after the pandemic announcement in 2020, 33 million people applied for unemployment insurance in the U.S. alone. Many members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo have also come face to face with the problems brought by the pandemic. From trying to make ends meet during a lockdown, to being infected themselves with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, And for some, like many others around the world, have had to deal with the loss of loved ones to the illness. Fully aware of the need of Iglesia Ni Cristo members to be strengthened in such times, the current Executive Minister of the Church continues to emphasize the importance of serving and worshiping God and doing what God wants His people to do. Nanade. 私たちの信仰心を強める活動をしている兄弟ワイドビームなどに心から感謝をしています。The messages that we receive it gives us hope that everything will be okay. What I learned from the uh, Bible-based lesson preached by our executive minister, if God is with you, um, He will help you in times of need. But this isn't the first time the Iglesia Ni Cristo has been through a global pandemic. Nearly four years since its registration with the Philippine government in 1914, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, along with the rest of the world, faced the influenza pandemic of 1918. The pandemic of 1918 to 1919 was one of the deadliest and most virulent epidemics ever to hit humanity. By most estimates, more than half of the global population became ill, and at least 50 million individuals died in the pandemic. The spread of this deadly disease, which became known as the Spanish flu pandemic, did not spare the Philippines. Nearly half of the entire population got infected, around 4 million Filipinos, and an estimated 85,000 lost their lives. Despite this, research into the history of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, under the leadership of the then Executive Minister, Brother Felix Y. Manello, reveals how the Church continued to progress. According to records from 1918 to 1919, the Iglesia Ni Cristo held conferences of ministerial workers and church officers to discuss the rapid growth of the church at that time. During one of those meetings, the Iglesia Ni Cristo Secretariat presented its report about the condition of the church. Ang lahat ng iglesia sa bawat puok ay sumusulong sa taon-taon. Ang mga iglesia ay sumigla at tumibay. Ang mga iglesia sa punta, buting at tondo ay nagbunga at nakagawa ng maraming mga tulong sa ibang mga iglesia. Ang iglesia sa tondo ay siyang may mahigit na bunga at nakagawa ng malaking tulong sa ibang mga iglesia ang tinutulungan. In other historical accounts of the church, houses of worship were even built in 1918 in the Philippines during the influenza pandemic. Between 1917 and 1918, among the houses of worship that were built were those of the congregations in Tondo, Tipas, Pulo, and Rosario. 
The training of ministers, which began in 1915, also continued in 1918 despite the challenges brought by the influenza pandemic. Those who passed the ministerial training from 1915 to 1918 were ordained by Brother Felix Manalo in 1919. Brother Felix continued to send ministerial workers and trainees to various places to propagate the words of God. And the brethren also actively helped in inviting many people to listen to the biblical teachings upheld by the Iglesia Ni Cristo. This resulted in the further growth of the church. New congregations were established, such as Tai Tai Rizal, Santo Tomas Pampanga, San Fernando Pampanga, San Vicente Bacolor Pampanga, Santa Barbara Bacolor Pampanga, and Palanyag, now known as Paranyake. Yet all of this was achieved not only in the face of a terrible pandemic, the Iglesia Ni Cristo members also faced and overcame severe persecution from people of other faiths. It was also in 1918 when Brother Felix instituted the Pagsamban ng Kabataan or the Children's Worship Service. He trained Children's Worship Service teachers and officers to help care for the spiritual welfare of the children and youth of the church. And since the church's membership continued to grow in number, the church trained more officers to assist in caring for the church. These successes were the result of the members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo back then doing what pleases God. And so it comes as no surprise that at present, the current executive minister of the church continues to encourage all members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo to also keep doing what pleases God. Just as the Iglesia Ni Cristo members did during the time of the 1918 influenza pandemic. At present, Iglesia Ni Cristo members continue to offer abundantly, thus helping in the ongoing construction of worship buildings. Although many are affected by community lockdowns and quarantines, through the use of social media and messaging apps, Iglesia Ni Cristo members continue to share their faith with other people. As a result, many more people are being baptized into the church. There is also an active participation in the various activities launched by the church's Christian family organizations. And all over the world, Iglesia Ni Cristo members continue to actively fulfill their worship services to God, even utilizing video streaming technology where needed. Furthermore, the executive minister, Brother Eduardo Vimanalo, has continued to ordain more ministers in the church and has conferred three batches of ministerial workers since the beginning of the pandemic. Also, in fulfillment of God's command to help those in need, the church has provided humanitarian aid to communities around the world in the form of food, clothing, PPEs for COVID-19 frontliners, and even monetary assistance. The Iglesia de Cristo has also allowed its Ciudad de Victoria complex, where the Philippine arena is also located, to be used as a mega quarantine facility for COVID-19 patients. Nagpapasalamat po tayo sa INC no, na siga mismo ang nag-offer uh, na gamitin ito para tulungan ang ating gobyerno para i-address itong uh, need natin for quarantine facilities. Speechless ako sa INC no? kasi sabi ko nga, the facility, the point na pinahiram nyo sa amin to, the assistance, lahat ng kayang maitulong, masuportahan itong kahit hindi iglesia. It's unclear whether the COVID-19 situation will get better. But as in the example left by Brother Felix Manalo and the Iglesia Ni Cristo members who lived through the 1918 pandemic, members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo at present will continue doing what pleases God. Maganda man ang takbo ng buhay, pangit man ang takbo ng buhay, kinakailangan, hindi mo pinapayagan, mawala yung mapagtitiwala ang pananalig sa Panginoon, ano man ang mangyari. Tataga natin ang ating pananampalataya. At para tayo tumatag sa pananampalataya, kailangan yung mga kalooban ng ating Panginoong Diyos na isa sa katuparan ng bawat isa sa atin. Kailangan mamalagi tayong matatag sa pananampalataya kung ano yung tinanggap nating aral sa loob ng iglesia sapagkat dito sa iglesia ng ito ay mayroong sugo ang ating Panginoong Diyos na siyang may karapatang mangaral ng dalisay na ebanghelyo 
Yun ang lagi nating panghawakan. Huwag tayong hihiwalay doon. Ano man ang mangyari, dapat iniingatan natin yung pananampalataya. Nagtitiis tayo, nakatayo tayong batatag, nagtitsyaga hanggang sa wakas. Ano man ang ating nasasagupa, ano man ang nangyayari, hawak-hawak natin dapat ang pananampalataya natin. Kung kinakailangan ng pagtitiis, kung kinakailangan ng pagtitsyaga, gagawin natin yun hanggang sa wakas. Ano dahilan? Yan po ang makatitiyak ng pangakong kaligtasan.